Thank you so much, TJ. Happy New Year, Board of Commissioners and citizens of Douglas County. We will call this Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, Board of Commissioners meeting to order. We're uh, pleased this morning to have our own Pastor Josh Smith. But before I bring the pastor up to render prayer, I would like to call roll, uh, officially call roll call. Um, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Robinson. I'm here. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. District two is present. Mm -hmm. District three, Commissioner Carthen. Present. District four, Commissioner Guider. Present. Chairman, present. All of us are present and accounted for. Again, good morning, citizens of Douglas County and Board of Commissioners. This morning, we're pleased to have our uh, have Pastor Josh Smith here to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, I ask that you please join me in reciting the pledge to the flag. Um, Pastor Smith, you yes. have the floor. Amen. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this opportunity. so that we can behave the way that would bring glory to you, God. I, I, I ask you, Lord, to um, forgive me, first of all, Lord. Uh, um, Romans 13 says that we're to be subject to the higher authorities, the people in our lives, Lord, that we're to pray for our leadership, Lord. And, and I repent of the fact that I have criticized uh, leaders more than I have prayed. And for that, that's no good for nothing. Um, Lord, identifying the problems is not hard, but to seek the solution, seek the face of Jesus. That's what we need. So, God, I, I pray for our commissioners this morning. Lord, I, I know they carry burdens. I don't know what they are, but I know they carry them. So, Lord, whether it be their marriage, children, broken relationships, the pressures of this job, Holy Spirit, God, I pray that you would fall fresh on them. Let them feel your presence and your grace. And Lord, that you would download wisdom and discernment. And Lord, that we would live for the uh, glory of God and not the eyes of men. Let us put the fear of men away. Lord, we're to love one another. By this, people know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. So God, I just pray today that you bless the commissioners. Let them lead. Um, Lord, uh, let us look through the lens of the gospel. Let us not look through uh, my my race, my political stance, my political views, uh, cow and meal. It's not about Douglas County or Georgia or the United States. It's about the kingdom of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. You laid down your life for us. So let us look through the lens of the gospel, the death, the burial and resurrection. Let your Holy Spirit work within us that we can love one another, be kind, be patient, not insisting on our own ways. My flesh wants to win a debate, but your spirit wants to win souls to for, for your glory. So Lord, let us put ourselves aside, not worrying whether you're on our side or the other side or whatever that's even supposed to mean. But if we be the children of God, let's make sure we're on our Father's side. Father, continue just to bless. Lord, heal our hearts, and you can heal our land. Let us not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. If you'll forgive us, Lord, who are we to withhold forgiveness from others? So, Lord, I, I, I love you, and I want to demonstrate that more than words. I want to do it in actions. I want to love my neighbor. I don't get to choose my neighbor, but I'm told to love my neighbor. So, Lord, give me the strength to do what I know I'm supposed to do. And let us uh, bring forth a year of revival, a year of hope. And Lord, just break us so you can bless us. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this commission board. Again, bless their homes and larger coasts. Give them favor with God and man. And let us repent of the things that is withholding um, a closer, intimate relationship with you. We love you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Smith, for rendering such an amazing prayer this morning. Um, Board of Commissioners, would you please join me uh, in reciting the Pledge to the Flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag 
in the states, states there. States of America and to the Republic, the Republic of which, of which it stands, one nation under God, visible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much for the commissioners. Um, clerk, do we have any public comment this morning? Clerk? Uh, we did not have anyone sign in, Chairman, but I would put it out there to ask if there's anyone that's called in, if you would like to speak this morning, any citizens? And remember, Lisa, it has to be a germane to the agenda. Thank yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I don't think we have anyone, Chairman, so I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Lisa. Board of Commissioners, you have the um, the minutes. We will approve the minutes accordingly. You have the special call minute meetings of December 17th, 2020, the commission meeting minutes of December 15th, 2020, work session minutes of December 14th, 2020, and the executive session minutes of December 14th. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections that need to be made? made. Are there any direct deletions or corrections or additions that need to be made, Board of Commissioners? No, ma'am. Thank you. Being none, the minutes stand as approved. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right into the consent agenda. And the consent agenda is tab number five, uh, authorization to approve. And please remember on this consent agenda, all items are subject to final legal review. And I ask if you have any discuss discussions or uh, regarding any of these items when you bring forth uh, our directors to speak, if you have uh, questions at that time, be mindful of your three minutes for the commissioners. Tab number five is authorization to approve a juvenile court attorney contract with James Agonastaskis to replace the attorney contract with Lisa Johnson and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number six is authorization to approve a change order with Georgia Power for the lighting installation at Liberty Road at I-20 ramp with no additional funds required and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number seven, authorization to approve a change order with Georgia Power in the amount of $2,500 for the lighting installation at Highway 78 and Post Road intersection and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number eight is authorization to accept the bid from Georgia Power in the amount of $9,100 for installation of light poles at Fire Station 11, Highway 92 as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Documents. Tab number nine is authorization to renew agreement with Comprehensive Program Services Incorporation CPS with Douglas County Sheriff's Office for January 1st through December 31st, uh, 31st 2021 to provide enhan enhanced security electronic service for all covered electronic systems at a total of $166,616 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 10 is authorization to approve the change order for number four in the amount of $13,483 with Summit Construction and uh, Development LLC for construction of the Baker's Bridge Sweetwater Church High Point Doris Road intersection improvement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11 is authorization to approve change order number two in the amount of $8,539.57 with El Salsor um, Construction LLC for construction of the John Weston Bright Star in intersection improvement project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12 authorization to approve change order number two in the amount of $2,990.80 with a CW Matthews Contracting Company Incorporation for the construction of the Maxim Road Congestion Mitigation Project P1 number 0012621 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13, authorization to approve the purchase of approximately 4.453 acres of land on Earl D. Lee Boulevard on the future site of the Department of Driver Services and, and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, this concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 
Okay, we have so moved and a second. Any discussion, Board, uh, board of Commissioners, on any particular uh, item? Yes. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. All right, I've got three points for my three minutes. Um, I'm going to do item number nine first up, uh, comprehensive is it CPS. Um, I'm okay. going to follow up for our conversation that we had yesterday. Um, um, is somebody from our public safety on the line? And and Commissioner uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, if I could correct you, you have three minutes per. If you have three items, you have nine minutes. Is this no, three minutes I just do it. I just I'm good on how I did it. Oh, thank you though. We're good. Um, CPS. Is there anybody from public safety, please? I'm not sure. Anybody out there from the public safety department? Lisa, you see anyone? All right. I so. don't see anyone. See if we could get someone on the phone for Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner, you want to move on to the next one, and then I will try to get someone on the phone for you to come back to that one if you would like. Hey, uh, I got to Yeah, let's let's go to um, Miguel. Okay. <laughs> All right. Valentine, All right, can you get on the line, please? Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, good morning, Director Valentine. Um, good morning. Specifically, let's talk about um, Maxim Road, please. Yes. Um, just again, by way of background, um, uh, just what that project is and why we're making this amendment, please. Uh, certainly, Commissioner. Uh, the, the project involves uh, the intersection of uh, Maxim Road and Thornton Road, and it is intended to uh, improve traffic through that intersection and also to add sidewalks on Maxim Road uh, so that uh, residents uh, can access the shopping areas uh, more safely than previously. Um, as you might uh, recall, there have been accidents along that stretch of road. Uh, the project goes up to um, the uh, subdivision and the apartments on Maxim Roads, approximately a half a mile from the intersection. Uh, but it is intended to improve uh, vehicular traffic and to improve pedestrian movement uh, uh, in that area. The, the change order resulted in a change in the type of retaining wall that is being constructed. And it is uh, a minor change, but it, it has uh, to do with the very specific grading uh, in, that, in that area. Uh, often when you develop plans, they are um, more generic and even though they they try to be uh, specific enough to cover um, most of what you're trying to do once you get out there perhaps the the type of soil may be slightly different uh, the elevations may be slightly different and so this was an adjustment to to fit the project with uh, the actual field conditions and uh, thank you director valentine and uh, for the public and specifically District 2. Uh, th this project is part of our SPLOS. This is something that uh, we admitted the SPLOS list at some point to deal with operational safety. Um, uh, the Thorn Road, Max Road is one of the most dangerous intersections in the state and specifically the most dangerous west of Atlanta. Um, all that traffic coming from Cobb um, onto Thorn and, and obviously in reverse. Uh, it's very important. It's a lot of density there. And to uh, Director Valentin's point, when you have pedestrians and motor vehicles coming together, they, sometimes they don't mix if you don't have uh, proper transitions, um, sidewalks, bike lanes, et cetera. I'm encouraged to see that the bike, um, excuse me, the sidewalks are being built there. And I'm going to close my statement by stating that I, uh, Director Valentin, um, validate for me that um, there was um, a message that came out that the uh, there will be construction beginning today through the 29th and that that intersection will be closed along that way. That one lane will be closed from 9 to 3 every day from today through the 29th of January. Is that accurate, the information that we received? Uh, that is correct, Commissioner. Uh, and it, it is not necessarily... Uh, every single day for the entire day, but it would be periodically throughout the day as, as necessary for the construction. Uh, it will be a single lane closure. So uh, the, the 
the intersection will be fully operational and vehicles can traverse through that area. Uh, but uh, there could be periodic uh, shutdowns of one lane in, in one direction. Thank you very much. And my last, thank you, um, Director Valentin. My last um, question um, uh, deals with, um, um, I guess this is going to be dealing with the one, dealing with, what do you want to call it, you, um, the DDS, um, uh, our DMV rather. And I'd like to get someone that can speak to the four point some odd acres that we're going to acquire. Can anybody speak to that? Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I can be glad to, and I think James Worthington is going to take it over based on whatever the board does today. Sounds good. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, this is the uh, CDL Commercial Driver's License Center that staff and the board have been working on with the state for some period of time. I think y'all, according to Jennifer Hallman, yes, they already have a reimbursement resolution. The price tag is six hundred thousand uh, uh, purchase price. Uh, it is below that is below the uh, assess value. I think James said yesterday during your work session it's been environmentally tested. Y'all's vote today, if you should vote to approve closing, will proceed us to closing to capture that property and get it closed. If you vote not to, it would terminate the transaction, but I think it's all teed up. And I think as I understand it from the chair and James, James will be taking it over to make sure it gets to closing along with the legal department. Okay. Um, Director Worthington, you want to add anything else to the, the conversation? Uh, I believe Ken touched on everything pretty well, but yeah, I will be taking over that unless someone sees otherwise, but I will, um, I'll make sure that gets through closing and I'll be working with the DDS in the future to get that project um, handled. Very good. And my last question that came up, and this is to Director Holman. Uh, we spoke yesterday during the work session that uh, well, this was not in the budget for 2021 and that we were going to take some actions today. Director Holman, can you speak to that? What what the administration plans to do regarding um, why was it one not in the budget and two how are we going to address this transaction, please? Vice Chair, I'm sorry, this is Lisa. Um, yes. Jennifer is actually sick today, so she okay. is not on the call. All right. Is there anybody from finance that's available that can address this from the administration? Um. Is um, our financial advisor on the call? I do not see him. Right, right. I can so, try to contact him. Okay. Um, I, I've just had some concerns. Um, uh, just for the record, I'm going to get off um, why this was not part of the budgeted process. Um, obviously, it was six hundred some thousand dollars um, going into this budget cycle. Um, duly noted. Um, we have to acknowledge the fact that we're going to now amend our budget accordingly, reducing it. I think it was mentioned yesterday around 11.4 million fund balance and 11.5% now from the 12% and 12 million that we, we approved as a board. So just for the record um, that uh, for the citizens that we are watching, you know, our role is to provide oversight. Um, and that is something that um, we, we should have planned for. Um, it should have just budget been budgeted outright uh, because it's the amount. Uh, that should have been acknowledged. Uh, we know it's important. I think all of us acknowledge how important this is, and we do appreciate the governor and uh, obviously the senators that were involved in helping us uh, and the reps that were involved in helping us get this uh, th this particular uh, uh, initiative done. So please don't get me wrong, but just from a planning perspective, we need to be a little bit more um, intentional um, and transparent in how we do that. I yield the floor, Madam Chair, and we don't have to come back to the other one. I've taken enough time. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, any other questions or comments before we move forward? Okay. Madam Chair? Mm hmm May I have the floor? Yes, you, you may. Okay, thank you so much. Is there anyone um, in regards to item number five? Number five. Um, That's the juvenile I, I'm not sure if Judge Harrison is here this morning, uh, Commissioner. I spoke with her, but she said that there would be someone on the call to address oh, my concern. Oh, okay. Okay. Is Thank you so much. Who who who's speaking? Debbie McDonald. 
Hey, Debbie. Okay. My question is in regards to the juvenile contract attorney. So can you explain to us uh, what is going on in regards to this contract? Is this a replacement? Is this a new contract? How are we doing it? Because I don't see the contract in the, um, it's not on the agenda, the contract itself. Okay, um, Jennifer Moore would have the contract. I did email her about that. It's just a replacement. Okay. Lisa Johnson did not renew her contract for the new year. We're replacing her with James Agnostakis. Okay, so uh, in my last, in my last statement, I did ask that going forward, if we're doing contracts that we not include uh, benefits, it's just a way to kind of help the county curb its expenses. And so I've been consistent with that. And I did speak to Judge Harris and she said she, she did understand that and that it had already went out internally but that she would correct it externally. Did she speak with you in regards to that? No, ma'am, that wasn't in regards to this contract. These are attorneys that represent families and children in our court. This is not the law clerk position, which you're speaking about, which is not on the agenda today. Okay, so this, this is strictly contract, no benefits tied to it. It is strictly a contract with the attorney. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. I just wanted to make sure that that, that was clear, but that was in regards to the law, law clerk. Okay, got it. And you said the contract for this juvenile court attorney position is with Jennifer Moore. Is Jennifer Moore available? Thank you so much, Debbie. I appreciate you clearing that. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, Jennifer, I don't see the contract attached in our Dropbox. Okay, I'm not sure who put this on the agenda, but I can, um, I can find that contract for you and send it over to you if you'd like for me to. I, I would just to make sure that we're consistent across the board with with the contracts that we're putting forth for Chairman Jones to sign. Sure, no problem. I can do that right now. Okay, so I, I won't hold it up, Chairman Jones, but I do want to take a look at it before you sign it, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. When I call your district, please approve accordingly, or please respond accordingly. Um, District 1, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. District 2? Yes. Robinson. District 3, Commissioner Carthen? District 4, Commissioner Guider? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote in the motion carries and the consent agenda is approved accordingly. Board Commissioners, before I make the announcements this morning in the absence of our Communications Director Rick Martin, do we have any announcements that you all would like to make for, you, for your districts before I proceed with the announcements? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Guider. Yes, I would just like to remind people that Ephesus Baptist Church is having their uh, drive through pantry this Wednesday. I think the time is it three. I'm not sure about the time, but it's the normal time that they uh, have it every month. Just wanted to remind everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. All right, Board of Commissioners. Okay. All right. I saw Commissioner Carthen first, and then I saw, I heard Commissioner Mitchell, and then I saw Commissioner Robinson saying last. So, Commissioner Carthen, you're first. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just wanted to say Happy New Year to the citizens and just to let District 3 know that we will be doing a town hall on January 12th, um, keeping in um, step with CDC guidelines. This will be virtual. This will be a Zoom. Um, you will be able to find out more information uh, on our um, Douglas County District 3 Facebook page. Um, I will also be sending it out to those in our newsletter. So just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware on January 12th at 6.30, District 3 Town Hall. Of course, all of Douglas County is invited, but just wanted to uh, get a feel from the citizens of District 3 as to what this year would look like, what they are expecting. And again, I ran to be your voice at the table, so I need to hear the voices of my constituents. Uh, with that, I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carter. Commissioner Mitchell? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, first, again, let me just say to the citizens of Douglas County, um, happy 2021. And I anticipate this is going to be a, an even better year. Uh, 
2021 is behind us and I think uh, we're glad that that is behind us, but you know, there's just uh, happy new year to those that are watching this broadcast and uh, to those citizens of Douglas County. But I do have one other concern outside of just making an announcement. Um, this morning I had a meeting with Parks and Rec's committee meeting and I've got some concerns and I thought that, and I was kind of anticipating or waiting on this, as you told me this morning, Madam Chair, that um, somehow there was a, an email sent out, which I eventually went back and just FYI and saw the email. I wanted to find that there's a, been some form of a committee restructuring from my understanding immediately. And I want us to speak to that so I can understand what just happened. How did we get to this point where I'm a little baffled by this. Um, and it was a shocker to only find this morning that this is what happened late last night. And I apologize that I didn't get the email until, you know, I got to the meeting and wanted to find what they even then didn't know anything about it. So are we speaking to this restructuring or this redoing of this committee stuff that went out from my timing? It, I think it was like either 11 or 12 o'clock from what I saw it. It was late and it was immediately. I'm just concerned about where are we with that? So please, if you would explain and then I'll, I'll kind of come up with my other questions I have. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. It's a great question. Certainly the committee assignments, which I have not uh, made any committee assignments in two years, I was sending those out in advance and it was, it's just so you could look at them last night. That was the purpose of sending those out late so I could announce those this morning. But I've received, and, and I guess everybody is like, some people are like me, they're up late at night and, and they get a chance, have an opportunity to read emails and do uh, cert other certain things. But of course, um, I've received a couple of responses that uh, that uh, a couple of commissioners are uh, have declined. So I couldn't, an immediate meant uh, I was going to make the announcement today so we could uh, meet with each other and you all could have uh, time to talk to each other, coordinate the efforts, and then just kind of pass the baton to one another. And that's what immediate meant for 2021. And I didn't get a chance and I, I didn't know that anyone, uh, should I say, the Board of Commissioners would be able to look at the email last night at almost at 10, 11 o'clock. Then I sent another one at 12, so y'all could look at your habit. So if I made the announcements, at least you would say you had the document in your hand. So that was the purpose of me sending those out, but I have decided not to make an announcement today about appointments because I've had a couple of uh, commissioners decline, and I'm just going to wait so I can just go in and readjust. So uh, to answer your question, so it was okay. No, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll... No, to answer your question, it was it was intentional for it to be uh, announced this morning, but to make sure that you had the documentation in your hand. Okay, so what I'm reading here, thank you for the extraordinary services, and I'm getting, I'm paraphrasing, I want to appreciate your time and effectively, immediately, the 2021 Board of Committee, uh, Board Committee assignments in this PDF attachment. So you were, you were asking for our recommendation or you were making a statement to say this was going to be an immediate change that I'm looking at just reading your email. I'm just, again, I, I, now it sounds to me like you're telling me that this was a, a, a suggestion that you were sending out to the commission or the board to say, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about this? Are you okay with that? But I'm reading that doesn't, I, I guess I don't get that. Maybe I'm missing something. Could you help me understand that what I just read to the to the public versus what you just stated to me? Uh, sure, uh, I'd be more than happy to do that, Commissioner. You. When you make when I make assignments, of course, when those assignments are uh, given or provided to the Board of Commissioners, those are the uh, consignment the assignments coming from my office. And if there are any objections, you have the opportunity to decline and, and, and indicate those are that committee that's been assigned to you. If you're not interested, certainly I understand if you do not want to serve. But uh, typically, I, I did find out how we've done it in the past, and okay. it was I was I was shared and I spoke with our clerk. She said, "What happened? You just got a we provided copies of the new assignments, and that's what I did. I, I provided the copies." of the new assignment, I sent them to you via email so I could announce them this morning. Didn't realize that I needed to sit down and discuss each assignment with each commissioner because that is your new assignment. But if you're not interested, I understand if you don't want to serve, I understand. And, and, and not the interested part of it. I'm only trying to follow what you sent to me that I found out in the Parks and Rec Committee meeting this morning. 
that said effective immediately. That didn't sound to me from what I read, and maybe now I'm understanding what you meant. It didn't sound to me as though you were trying to tell me I'm making a recommendation or a suggestion or take a look at this and give me your thoughts. What I got was it was changed. I don't know what the other commissioners response to this, and I don't know their comments to this, um, but I was just a little or a lot concerned with that statement, what I just read again, and I thought as we talked this morning, you were bringing it to the full board as I guess this is your committee structure, not this is what you're recommending to this body. So maybe I'm missing something or what I read is not what I'm hearing. So let me apologize, then I'll say this much. I was disappointed in, after finding out this morning. That, well, that's why, that's why well, I tried let me finish, to- Madam Chair, let me finish. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed this morning mm -hmm. in what I read later this morning to find that this immediate change was as such. I was shocked only to find that this was the change, but why? Um, had no conversations with you, and I thought that was one of the things we was going to try to do better at, and that was communications, communicating with each other. And to find out this morning at the, the Parks and Rec Committee meeting, which I canceled because I was, I had to go back and find what this was all about as to what you said to me this morning, that you made a change, not you was recommending a change. So that's, that concerns me. Um, and, and I'm just baffled, I'm not sure, but it sounded to me what you wrote is not what you meant. If I'm hearing you now as to, uh, I'm assuming you probably heard from other commissions. I, I was in bed, got up this morning at four onto my daily chores and only to find that this email was sent that I have no knowledge of and had no conversation with any one of the commissioners to include yourself. And I, I think that's concerning. That's truly concerning as to the operations of this board and this body and doing the county business. So, but I see now I, I was wrong, I guess, based on what you wrote. I was, the way I interpreted it, I can't speak for the other commissioners. What did they, what were their thoughts? But what I heard was it was changed and this is what you're doing not you're know, making a recommendation as to this committee structure but again i'll let you kind of say that part of what you were trying to say as to what you wrote i can only go by what you wrote when you said go and read the email basically and that's what i did so just this stop it was disheartening and disappointing and again i can't speak for my other colleagues but uh i was well together shocked but I'm open enough to say, okay, I'm, I'm definitely willing to listen and understand why this drastic change. I'm willing to understand what might have happened. Um, I, I'm just confused as to what, what you wrote and sent to us via email. And that's only going by what you wrote as to what you're saying now to me, as to what, it, what you were meaning to say and what you were trying to accomplish. Madam Chair. I was trying to allow you to finish, uh, Commissioner Gange. Like I said, the intention was to make an announcement this morning of the newest uh, assignments, committee assignments, and that's why the information was dropped in your box so late. Uh, in previous years, you have not had anyone announce early or discuss those assignments with you. They were just provided to you on paper. That's uh, that's so you just, just walked. So, okay, maybe I missed a step, and I, pr I yeah. apologize if I missed a step. I, and I need to meet with everybody separately. And, and certainly the committees, let me just make that clear. We don't have to have committees, but half of these committees were created under my leadership. And certainly at some of them, this may be, I, I'm respectful of all y'all's time. And I really do. I respect your time. And I know you have other uh, commitments. And so I don't want to uh, really belabor this moment. And I understand. Uh, and I apologize if I missed that step, but I, I just through, put the assignments out, was going to make an announcement today. Certainly, if you didn't like the assignments, you could have declined. But I decided not to even make an announcement on assign on BOC uh, committee assignments. 
Let me pause, uh, pivot. Uh, I apologize to this board if, if I move too quickly uh, with the assignments. I will just totally just uh, disregard those assignments and then we will certainly, I understand if you can't serve. I understand you all are busy. I really do. And I respect well, that. Okay, Madam Chair, it's not that, that we're busy. Mm -hmm. It's not that that's not the case. And committee structures of this sort didn't just start with your administration, just FYI. And I'm not trying to denounce that you did or didn't start it, no. But committee structure has been in, in government, yet along in this county government, almost for a decade. So I, with I'm that- I'm though, some of the additional committees. I'm, I know the structure has been in place, Commissioner. Okay, uh, okay, so- Yeah, I didn't mean to say it that way. I was just saying this, some of the structures, like such as transportation, parks and recreation, uh, some of those uh, committees were not in place prior to me. Uh, so okay. that's what I'm saying. A lot of them that they were created under my leadership. Okay, but it, I, I apologize. Let's just do this. This okay. this is a BLC meeting. I apologize if the the email read wrong. It was late when I sent it. I wanted to make sure that you had the information available when I made the announcement. Certainly, this board will decide what you want to serve on and what you can serve on. Uh, that's. I don't even see the purpose of me even assigning committees if I can't assign a committee without a complete upheaval. So I apologize, I apologize, and I appreciate if we could just move forward. I, I, I apologize. Okay. That's the only thing I can do if you just accept okay. my apology. That's all I so, can do. So, and, 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 and I mean, there's no need for an apology. I, I, I'm just going by what I read and what I'm trying to understand and making sure that the general public also understand kind of what this was and because I was baffled this morning. However, so are we saying that we're going back to the original structure that was already in play or kind of what do we go from here other than- Let, let me just, I'll tell you okay. where we go from here. Okay. We go from here to February, February 1, and then after February 1, that I want to give everybody time to transition into your new roles because we already have meetings already in place. And those meetings have already kicked off for January. And then I want us to sit down and reconsider the new assignments. That's where we go from here. We want it to gen uh, February 1. Okay, Madam Chair. Um, I, I, again, I appreciate your your candidness in reference to this, but I still think this body is probably, if not, maybe I'm the only one that's just totally baffled, confused, and not quite understanding what was this and what was this all about. So uh, I'll yield for now the floor. And um, Okay, and maybe we can take it offline, Commissioner, so we can spend time so I can explain it to you better, okay? And then we could uh, certainly have dialogue further. Sure. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Guider, I, I see you. What? Yes, ma'am. Um, as long oh, as I've been on this board, uh, all we've gotten is a list of assignments by the chairman. I've always been told it is a, we serve at the discretion of the chairman. And I did want to reiterate that's the way it's been done ever since I've been on the board. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Guider. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. Okay. So um, sorry. I want to go back to the announcements, then I'll come back to this. The, 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 that, that, that's what we were talking about. Uh, um, so duly noted um, to the citizens of, of, of uh, um, for the county at wide on January 29th, that Thursday, we're working out for our, I guess we're going on our fourth annual doing business with Douglas. Uh, we've got a workshop that we're working out with GDOT. Uh, regarding the I-20 um, interchange, um, the, the sort of the, the bridge to fly over. Uh, specifically, it is um, uh, to prep, prime, educate, and encourage um, disadvantaged business enterprise participation in that project. As we know, less than 2% of all state contracts go to what we want to consider disadvantaged business enterprises. And so this is a, a, an intentional effort to expand the status quo for participation and inclusion. So more details will come out regarding that. Um, Director um, Stuart Stanley and, and um, uh, my legislative aide, Ruben Tillman, will bring out more information later regarding that. Um, um, I'll come back. My first town hall, uh, which is annually, usually around the springtime, will be March of this year. 
uh, for those who have been um, looking forward to that. I usually do some in the spring and some in the fall. So mark your calendars regarding that as well. Um, and in February, um, um, in, in anticipation of, of recent events, um, I will be um, doing a statewide tour regarding the First Amendment. I've been asked to come and speak on my situation, my experience, um, and, and deciding to um, take it to the federal government, take it to a judge to say to rule on um, a political page versus a personal page. And um, just for the, the public's clarity, um, I did not spend $177,000 on me per se. It was to de debate the point that I disagreed. There was no federal ruling. It was not illegal. Stay off personal pages. You're not required to um, befriend someone. Politicization of Facebook, take that up with Zuckerberg. It has nothing to do with people who just put things out there for photos. Let your political be your political, let your personal be personal, but I look forward to going across this state um, and, and taking that um, to the public on and what this is and what this is not um, accordingly. So, and the last thing is, of course, with that 177, which is probably larger than that, um, we were insured. No drag on the fund balance. Okay, but appreciate the spot to the big leagues, guys, but, but duly noted. Now, let's come back to um, committees. Um, you know, just so the public knows what's going on, yes, we, we do have committees. Committees are a way in which the legislative branch uh, um, 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 works with the executive branch. It's important that you get buy-in before it gets to the floor. It's only wisdom. I mean, you can wait to the floor, but then it, it'll be a lot of tabling, a lot of, you, you may want to rethink that. And so, the structure is a way in which to get buy-in along the way. That's maturity. It's not about who picks it. It's the process. You get one or two commissioners already bought in coming up before it gets to the whole uh, assembly. That makes sense, right? That, that makes sense for um, inclusion. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I, I, I'm listening to all of this. Um, I, I did not weigh in, perhaps, um, I, I guess I'll weigh in and say I, I decline all committee assignments my, myself uh, accordingly. But it, it wasn't about that because it's important everybody understands that, as you guys know, it's called a committee of one. Commissioners can inspect any office, any record, any time through local legislation. I, I think, um, to Commissioner Mitchell's point, it was just communication. What we've always took a position on, and to Madam Guy's point, is just like with the redistricting map, you don't shotgun things over the weekend, especially not overnight, right? We, 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 so that's not historical. We, there's always been communication. Um, and so I, I think um, it looks like, uh, and I have not talked to my peers, but it looks like we're all landing for different reasons. And just for example, and I'll, I'll close with this comment, which is you, you pick based on either value or interest. I can add no value as chairman of Fire and EMS. Love those guys, but I would always have to yield and respect what I believe Madam Guider is being. Well, I, I can't touch her with that. I have no value to that, to that, nor uh, my interest lies somewhere else. So it's always choice in everything. But it, that's just one example that says, well, I'd have to yield to somebody I respect more on that one. So I'd, I'd give that back just out of courtesy to says, well, she got that on lock, right? So this sort of respecting uh, um, the value that each person brings to the table. So um, I'm going to stop. That's all I have to say regarding that. It sounds like you guys have um, correctly framed this, and I guess there'll be more conversation amongst us regarding where this goes. So again, um, I'm good. As you know, I, I can hit any corner in the county uh, without titles per se um, or participation, but um, I, I get the point that's being made here. So I'm like, okay, guys, I'll see where it goes. Madam Chair, we're good. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson, and thank you so much, Commissioner Guider and Commissioner Mitchell. Just wanted to add that, a circle back to Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Mitchell, thank you so much again. I felt humiliated earlier, but I'm glad that Commissioner Guider confirmed that in the past that all the your assignments were just handed to you and I basically sent them to you and then was going to actually give you an opportunity to I, I did a double uh, um, whammy 
I sent them to you via email and then I was going to announce them on now make an announcement today. So I apologize for any confusion. And uh, of course, the purpose of these committees, they're not you're, you're not married to these committees. And I, I'm thinking that we should all have an opportunity to work in all facets of government, just not one. We all are uh, we are equal. We are skilled. We are competent. We're educated. And I'm thinking for two years, we all served in one particular role. I, I, I thought that it would be OK to change the assignments, not hold uh, one individual or two individuals hostage to one position. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's OK to do. And, and I'm really surprised that the opposition that I received this morning regarding change of assignments. I'm just I, I'm shocked a little bit, but that's OK. Uh, I, I live and I learn. But I'm thinking that we want to do things and rotate and change it up. Uh, I've been told several times on many numerous occasions that change is good. Uh, and we all agree that change is good. We've made some huge changes this year all up across the organization. And I said all of it. And of course, I'm doing something a little different. I'm serving on all the committees. I put my name on all of them so I could sit at the table and be in every room and make sure that I, I understand all facets. facets. Uh, what I've done in the past, I've just served primarily on committees with Commissioner Robinson, and I wanted to just uh, really just shake it up a little bit and do something different, but didn't really, did not want to cause an upheaval within uh, between us as commissioners. I see you, Commissioner Carthen, so go for it. No, to your point, I, I want to commend you on wanting to change it, right? My My only thing was the process. Um, I would have rather done what we did at NACO and ACCG. You know, you you talk, you put those assignments out there and you let people come back to you. So when I got your email last night, I was like, oh, so if it's effective immediately, then the Parks and Recs meeting this morning, I wasn't on because I, I totally thought like Commissioner Mitchell, OK, this is effective immediately, so I don't need to get on. And so, you know, I didn't want to usurp what you had Commissioner Guider doing or what you were doing. Um, so it was a shocker. But I think, you know, just just moving forward, it would be proper to, to, to just communicate so that everybody has a proper handoff and that, you know, we're all playing to our strengths because leaders, you know, create leaders. They don't create followers. So, you know, when, when you're leading, if there's no one following and then there's no other leaders at the table, you kind of have to stop and go, okay, so what's going on? So I commend you for wanting to change. I also commend you for acknowledging maybe this was not the best way to do it. So, uh, but I want you to know we are definitely here to support you. We're here to support our citizens. And so when we communicate, I think we better, uh, we're better able to actually get that done. But that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthy. All right, any other announcements before I move on with the announcements for the day? Okay. Board of Commissioners, I will read the announcements uh, in the absence of our communications director. Due to the exposure uh, of a positive, po uh, this is due to exposure to a positive COVID-19 uh, case, the Douglasville Public Library is cl uh, currently closed and will remain closed through February, uh, January, through Friday, I'm sorry, January 8th for deep cleaning and staff quarantine. The library plans to reopen on Monday, January 11th at 9 uh, a.m. While this library is closed, the book drop will remain open for returns and the Pines online system will be accessed for book renewals and holds. The Cloud Library app is also available for e-material checkout. The Dog River and Lithia Springs locations are open as usual. Uh, free COVID testing uh, continues at Deer Lake Park at 2171 Mack Road, Douglasville, Georgia. The drive through testing occurs Monday through fr Friday, 8 a.m. through 4 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment necessary. Douglas County Pulmonary Medicine is sponsoring in collaboration with Douglas County Parks and Recreation and the Sheriff's Office and Premier Drugstore. The Douglas County Courthouse will be closed Monday. January 18th in observance of Martin Luther King Jr., Douglas County Fire and EMS, which would be uh, the Sheriff's Office and the E911 would be open and always to protect and serve the residents of Douglas County. As a reminder, due to the holiday on January 18th, the next BOC work session will be held on Thursday, January the 14th at 10 o'clock. 
Board of Commissioners, that concludes our announcements. And if there are not any other announcements at this time, I will close by reminding the citizens of Douglas County to, to continue to double down on your measures for watch, washing your hands, social distancing, and wearing a mask when in public. Our numbers are surging, such as all over the United States at this point. And we are almost in a catastrophic mode in terms of, of this crisis. And I ask that everyone please um, be cognizant and uh, aware of your surroundings and your uh, social distancing and just making sure that you are helping participate in mitigate, uh, mitigating this virus. With that being said, Board of Commissioners and citizens of Douglas County, we will go into recess until 6 uh, p.m. And uh, I will see you all momentarily. We are now in recess. Thank you.